The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis P. McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. A. A is my middle. A is my middle initial. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit there if I don't look at me about. Oh, That's wow. right. Okay. My Brother, My Brother, and Me, 360. We've done it. Oh. We're all the way oh, back I see. at the start. So it's like um, geom- like a geometry joke. Yes. Like, okay, so we've circled back around or like a full, a fully immersive interactive experience. Well, mm. it's, bo- it's both, Travis. We're, revi- we're back to the beginning. Oh, no. Which, which means um, just a lot. We're just going to use challenging terminology for everybody that isn't a straight white dude. Like, sick, b- sick, just, great, yes, great, sick, sick, very and sick. What's the audio quality going to be like, you ask? Oh, it will be unlistenable. It's going to be like this. It's going to be Welcome. hard. To- yeah, it'll be hard to recreate that. I'm going to go put my expensive mic, sort of dip it in a toilet for a bit, and then continue using it. That should recreate sort of the original wave files I was producing. Back at the beginning, as if we never left, my brother, my brother, me, the beginning. What was that? Hey, here's yeah. a trivia question for you. What was the first question ever on my brother, my brother, and me? Was it shampoo and the shower? Yeah, maybe. Don't you know. don't know. I, you okay. shouldn't have hoping, asked it if you sh- didn't know it. I shouldn't have asked it if I didn't know it. That's, I completely agree. Now, Justin, <laughs> where does the, where does the 360 immersive, like, fully VR experience That's what I want to know about. Can I plug in? this into my fucking Google Cardboard that came with my New Yorker magazine and be in it, be in the room, be in the studio, turn to my left, see the big, big box of sickness tissues I've got going, look to my right, and see the, well, I've got a roll of toilet paper over here just in case I run out of sickness tissues. Can people experience this in real time in their Google Cardboard? That's the plan. We're still, <laughs> the tech is still sort of in its, in a nebulous infancy. We've got until tomorrow <laughs> mm-hmm. to figure it out because we're recording on Sunday. So getting the 360 experience, I think, is obviously the biggest challenge we're facing currently. Well, maybe we can maybe we can like audio it a little bit, and I can say like, well, right now to my right, I'm mm. recording on my desktop, but to my left, I'm shopping on Amazon for Father's Day presents for myself, and I'm eyeballing the portable air conditioner I had to turn off so as not to actually make it sound like our first ten episodes. Right. Yeah. Um. And every the, second that the, ticks by it, makes me sweat more and more. It was okay, the air after. conditioner saying all the problematic stuff. Yeah, that air conditioner. Oh, boy. I've got the it's first It's AC question. and definitely not PC. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got the first question. You ready? Yeah. Uh, my brother, my brother, and me comes to us from uh, the potato, the underscore potato on Twitter. God, that sounds uh, bad. He asks, I want a larger follower account, but I'm finding it difficult to get more than two in a day. Ew, this was what our- can I do? Start a bunch of accounts and have them follow each other. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. Good job. Good that job. was our good first job. question. We really that was our first question was about huh? fucking social media, like, acumen. That was really what we fucking kicked it off with. Hey, listen, we did okay. I mean, like, you can't, you, I do, I did have a lot fewer followers than I do now, so something in there is probably pretty good. Um, What are you all boys doing for Dad's Day? I'm gonna play um, a lot of computer games and for one brief hour pretend like my life now isn't at the whim of my seven month old daughter and that okay. I can actually make decisions for myself. I'm Should- trying to get to that Captain Underpants. Oh, yes. I'm trying to get over there. Another mm. DreamWorks franchise. I wanna celebrate the entire 
sort of company output. Um, I got to get over there. I tried to, to get the- over, tried to get over there, and I, in my excitement, I had two big buckets of popcorn, two big buppets. And you know, I kicked the door open into the theater, and they asked me to leave right there and then. So maybe I'll try again. <laughs> a little more subdued. Contain perhaps. it a little bit. Contain it. Who's your? Do you guys want to talk about a dad that's important to you? Not our dad, obviously, because uh, no. it's an easy one. But a dad that's important to you, like in media or like in real life, like my friend Steve's dad or something. I mean, if you, whatever you want to do, a dad's important to you. It's the only sort of. But not our dad. No, no, no. I mean, our dad's the most important dad. He's, he's a great dad and a very special father. But I feel like we talk about him and his funny injuries every Father's Day. Like the time he cut his butt open and used a maxi pad as a big bandit. <laughs> you know, basic stories like that. <laughs> still me on those bones, though. There's still, still me. me. Well, no, not on his butt bones. Because the, the, I believe it was a window screen cut him wide open, butt fell right off. So a dad weird. that's important to us, not, not our dad who poured kitty litter and bleached down a drain and knocked himself out for several hours. Right, 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 okay, right. It's convenient, about the, it's convenient about the butt thing. He puts his wallet in that side of his pants. He sits normal now. <laughs> it all Which balances out because yeah. some of the butt fell out when he cut himself. Right, right. That was yes. I'll start, I guess. Dave Hester from Storage Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we get to see some of that relationship unfold and entangle on the show with Dave Jr. And I don't know. I mean, not a traditional great dad, I guess. Um, but he has he has a catchphrase, and everybody loves that for a good dad. And you know, passes on business acumen, passes on the family business at all times. I you am, know, I am, I am fucking rolling on that Suda so fucking hard. <laughs> I'm on that Suda fifty one so hard that like I'm being hypnotized watching my own waveforms appear on the screen in front of me. This is going to be a fun record. I want to talk about Dave Thomas. Okay, wait, which founder, one? Founder of Wendy's. Okay. America's dad. Uh, here's some cool... He wants to know some cool fucking things about Dave Thomas. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, w- he was a- adopted. He started a foundation for adoption. Um, he worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and the colonel tried to lure him into um, a uh, tryst, a, a big pit, no. a big pit full, <laughs> a big pit full of hamburgers. And he was like, "You know me too well, Colonel." No, he was he was a uh uh he he listen he founded Wendy's. This okay. is huge. Agreed. Founded Wendy's in Columbus, Ohio. Go to the first Wendy's. I think it's closed now, but um. Found the first Wendy's, extremely successful, but didn't graduate from college, right? Get this. He quit high school, uh, in fact. He didn't even finish high school, but he found this a Wendy's. This is just a rose that keeps blooming. I know, I know. but get this. You ready? Yeah. yeah. He was so successful after dropping out of high school, he was worried that people would use him as an example for why you shouldn't finish high school. So he went back to high school. In hey, like quick, yeah, in quick. 1993, he went to Coconut Creek High School after founding Wendy's. This motherfucker went back to high school. It's great. And got his GED. I it's amazing. Just, let me pop right in. Can I get can I pop into the cut real quick? Whatever you got. Did Is he it have, about how he how, how he didn't wait for the draft of the Korean War? He volunteered for the army? Well, that yeah. Now, did he have kids? Did he have a what? kid? Did he have children? Yeah. He had four children. Okay, I just um, wanted to pop do, in. I just wanted to pop in there because we are talking about great dads, and you just he's America's dad. He's the father of the I Wendy's see, franchise, see. and he's father I, of of. He's like a, a a surrogate father to kids that want to quit high school. Yeah, and then find out that um. And here's just another factoid. This isn't really related, but he made a cameo appearance as himself in Bionic Ever After, a reunion TV movie based on the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman. All so right. that's kind of a cool thing about Dave Thomas, and All that right. was me. I do not have any context for that scene, but I'm assuming it's a pretty cool scene. Yeah. If for some reason Dave Thomas shows up as himself, I cannot fathom what happens in that scene, but I'm very excited that it exists. Do we know anything about Dave Thomas's politics? Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Um, I mean, Dang. he was rich, so oh. that probably didn't, uh, not great, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know about his personal politics. I'm not here to talk about Dave Thomas's politics. I'm here to talk about how he went back to high school to inspire kids to finish school. I think that's inspiring. Uh, looks like he's pro-choice. 
He's not anything. He's passed away. But the fine. Um. So, advice. So this is an advice show, and um, we help people with the real issues that are going on in their lives. Back in the early days, we used to do a lot of like benign shit. You know what I mean? Because we we were afraid to get our toes into some hot water. Um. But with it's three sixty, so now we're back around to really. Um, well, soaking these toes, soaking these toes in the hot water, like race, sex, politics, nothing's off limits. Because this is my brother, my brother, me, 360. Here's our first question How much cream cheese should I put on my bagel? And that's from Cream Cheese Confounded. Um, and it's, you know what? It's a pretty good question. Yeah. I guess so. It differs from where you go to where you aren't. It's because you go to an airport and you get a bagel at an airport and they give you a thimble, a borrower full of Those cream little. cheese, the littlest cup. But you go to a New York deli, hey, they get fucking crazy. It's like they've got a bunch of cream cheese and it's like Br- Brewster's Million style. They have to get rid of all of it in order to win the <laughs> treasure or something. Here's the thing. When it comes to cream cheese, I see four options with your cream oh, wow. cheese application. Hold right. on. Uh, you faxed me over a, a, a chart here. Let me, yeah. Listen, okay. I put a lot of thought All right. This. I'm reviewing it. Option A, you have your open face cream cheese on both sides of the bagel option, right? Two different okay. halves, both of them cream cheesed. Option B, you put uh, cream cheese on one half, you make a sandwich out of it. Option C, cream cheese on both half. Sandwich out of it. This is that double one, now cream that cheese. One, you're gonna dribble, and mm-hmm. it's gonna be. You're gonna get a lot of like. Is that cum? No, it's not. No, it's, it's cream not. cheese. I but did it. I got. I flew too close to the to the bagel sun and option option four. And mm. this is my preferred option. Just a container, whatever, a big lump of cream cheese, whatever, a dollop of cream cheese, however you prefer to measure it out. And then you break off pieces of there the bagel. Go. There we go. And you scoop the cream cheese with it. That is your cream cheese palette. And you will dip your brush and then spread it into the canvas of your mouth. Correct. I I think that cream cheese is actually a pretty good measure for where you're at as a grown-up. Oh. When I was a little kid, no cream cheese. Butter and jam for me, please, mother. Butter and jam. And then maybe a scoop I, of clotted cream. <laughs> as I got a little older, I had basically the thinnest la- possible layer of cream cheese. And then as I got even older and I started to appreciate that gooey, salty cheese, I started thinking, like, I could take a little bit more of this. I can handle some more. And so I would be eating a bagel with a pretty substantial amount of cream cheese. And then from out of nowhere, some adult, like a real grown up, would walk past me and be like, you know, some of us are putting locks on it. And it's like, I'll never get there. Yeah. I'm never going to get to a point where like, oh, that's a good amount of cream cheese, maybe a filet of brine salmon on mm. top of that. You know, they're doing some capers on there too, which are just, I cannot fuck with capers in any way. But like to think of a breakfast where I'm going to put a filet of brine salmon on my cream cheese, it's no un- way. It's unthinkable. It's, it's un- unthinkable. It's unimaginable. It's unthinkable. I'll fuck with some locks though. I don't know why I said it's unthinkable. Oh, I yeah. think about it a lot. And capers are really just like, Olives that couldn't quite get there, huh? <laughs> it is tiny, salty, just like little, uh, you know, like pop rocks only for salt instead of sugar. That's what caper is. They're just weird, sick peanuts. Yes. <laughs> if you really unpack it. Um, I prefer Travis's method. It's just like I have um, some tooth problems. Bottom left. my The whole bottom left quadrant in my mouth just doesn't behave. I've gone to see the dentist. The dentist says it's all made up, and I say it's. He says it's. You're just thinking too hard about it. Just to eat your eat your fucking food. Uh, it's all goofed up, and so every bite of food I take is is it's it's precious because it could be the last. So I want to perfectly measure out each perfect bite. Every bite of bagel that I take is like a little amuse bouche, and I just have a hundred of them, and it's perfectly creamed. And I'm good to I'm good to go. I'm ready to go. Anytime I have the opportunity to do that with my food, I will chase it. Anytime I have the opportunity to have a sort of dunkaroo method, I'm going I am going to chase that 100 percent of the time. You touched on this, Griffin, but I would like to circle back around when I'm getting deli in mm. New York, mm-hmm. like in New York, like they say, "Hey, Bo, 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 hey, what you know? is 
What you know is how they with, do it? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is, yeah. What is with the the literal like down comforter of cream cheese that I yeah. have to like nosh through to get to the bagel inside? What is going on over there? It makes it makes me think that you're supposed to take some of it off and save it for later. Like it's <laughs> like this is for tomorrow's. We don't know if you, we don't know if you have cream cheese at home, so this is for tomorrow's and possibly the day after that's bagels. It's a three day cheese. Well, what most people don't realize about the economy of New York City is that, like, the the cost of living is very high. Like, a beer is, like, $20. And, you know, like, rent is, of course, very high. Everybody knows that. And uh, It's like $20. Know, yeah, right. It's like $20. And a sandwich is like $20. And the balance is that cream cheese, super cheap. Like, yeah. one cent a pound. So, like, that's how they keep, like, that's how New York is able. If you took cream cheese out of the equation, everything would become so imbalanced in New York yeah. City that it would literally sink. Hit me with this. Hit me with this. It's a city on the go. Uh-huh. City on the go. City on the move. Everybody's always always moving and going from business meeting to business Never meeting, sleeps. Right? Never, Never sleeps. sleeps. Get in a cab, go from one business meeting to the fucking next business meeting. You've been home to check on your kids or your dog or whatever and forever. They're gone. They're, They're gone. gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're, They're on, on the, the go, move. too. They City went the to go. upstate New York. They're out. Give me a cup of, give me a cup yeah, of mud. You see Boom. babies stay out? This you baby's see babies all stay out? That's all it is. So listen, how come New York's food is like universally a big sloppy mess? You can go and get a big wet slice of za and it's going to dribble and drizzle all over you. You get a pound of cream cheese between two round boys and that's going to get all over you. You eat a big, the, the Coney dogs, Coney dogs. Don't get me started. There's two different types of dribblings and drizzlings that you can do all over yourself. What is it? You're on the go and you're on the move and everybody's just fucking sticky and 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 wet and covered in condiments all the time. What's up, New York? That's oh, why, think, that's why think, Griffin, they need it as an excuse to stop. Like, that's how you know your uh, day see. is done in New York. It's like, well, I'm caked in ketchup and cream cheese and syrup and whatever. Yeah. So n- now it's like, time. Now it's time to been take at, a brief You've moment. been out on the big streets making mud pies and mom's calling you in for the day. Exactly. You've had enough, you've had enough fun. Maybe, though, let me hit you with this. Maybe that is, you ever heard the term tourist trap? Maybe it's pretty literal in this sense. Like, oh, you ate the food. Well, you're stuck, and I can just zip right on past you. Hey, no problem. New York, more like no fork, because they don't use, they don't even use utensils for these big, messy foods. No fork city. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Sure. In a no fork minute. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This one was sent in by. This one was sent by Amelia Berger. Thank you, Amelia. It's Yahoo Answers use. Even the apple's big. The I mean, big. It's a big, a ju- and you know it's wet. It's juicy inside. You know it's juicy. And it's Ugh. been sitting up there long enough that it's also like really soft, so you're going to bite it, and the texture's not going to be right. Gonna Sorry, Trav. Squirt. Sorry. Uh, qu- stop the podcast. Uh, it's been up there. Where do you think the apple is? It's on top of the Empire State Building. That's why King Kong climbed up there. To get the, <laughs> it, it, the tracks. Yeah, he needed that apple. It was worth ten, it was worth a thousand bonus points. <laughs> fine, fine. Did um, you not think I'd have an answer for that, Justin? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, Kevin Zach asks, more like Big Snapple. It's been a while. Oh, it's God, been a while. I'm glad it's back. Um, wow, this website's not good. <laughs> Kevin Kevin Zach, the man so nice they named him twice, asks, how do we make apple juice more relevant to adult consumers? Our company's been pressing apples and making apple juice for generations. All of the apple juice we make is Griffin, pure. Griffin, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to yeah, stop it's you. It's weird. Because it's I, weird. Think, I think your trip down on Sudafed, we did do this question last week. Did we? No, we it, didn't. It was brought up in the twofer part at the end of the episode. But we didn't do said, it, right? But you said the thing. Was that just a preview of things to come? Yeah, now we're going to do it. We didn't, we didn't talk about it, did we? So no, wait. I don't remember this at all. So wait. Hold on. It's been 360 episodes, and this is the first one in which Griffin actually said a Yahoo last week that we are actually going to talk about the next week. That's uh, the way we've always this done not the it. Final. This wasn't the final. This wasn't the final. I'm losing uh, my mind. I mean, I am too. I'm literally not lucid right now. Um, how do we make these fucking juices more relevant to adult consumers? It's good. It's a good topic. Do you want to not do it? No, I do. I do. I just, I wanted to be the human tweet that we were going to get. Okay. Travis McElroy is the human, human tweet. tweet. Here's the thing. Do you know what the people love these days, Can you Griffin? let me finish the fucking I question? I thought you finished details. it. Oh, no, God. You, no, you, you, you interrupted him. You I don't even remember. All the apple juice we make is pure, uncut shit. 
fucking send you to space. <laughs> Uh, all the apple juice we make is pure, not from concentrate, pressed from local apples, and sold shelf-stable, not chilled. We sell our apple juice in four different pack sizes. One liter, our best-selling format. Format? A uh, five-pack of seven-ounce juice boxes, a 128-ounce jug, and a 46-ounce bottle. Primary consumer of apple juice has traditionally been kids. Concern around the sugar content of juice, along with the aging population and the households having fewer kids, has led to apple juice declines in recent years. Apple juice is loaded with health benefits that are irrelevant to adults, yet it has never been directly targeted or promoted to them. The pure and uh, local nature of our apple juice is on trend with today's adult consumer. Note, solutions with alcohol are not compatible with our brand. So think of something else to say, Justin and Travis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if I could, if I could speak on that for a moment, uh, I went through Taco Bell drive-through on my way home from the airport because there's not a lot of options, and I like eating it also. And um, the, the, to other, I prefer it to other options when many options are presented. Often that is the one I prefer to eat with my mouth. And uh, cheat day, buzz off. Anyway, I ate there, and they have a new option there. Um, that is Mountain Dew spiked. Ooh. And I had a moment that I was so fucking excited about Mountain Dew spiked lemonade that Taco Bell finally it's a one stop shop. Well, you, you can get everything there at three in the morning now after you've been drinking. You can now get drunker, drunker, but, yeah. And here's the thing: it's non alcoholic, and it says mm. uh, you have. To, it says on the sign does not contain alcohol. And I just wanted to say to Taco Bell, and this is sort of like a mini Munch Squad diversion, I guess. If you have to specify that a product does not contain alcohol, maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board mm. on what you named the thing. Like, if, if, you, if you were to have, like, um, we've got a new thing. It's apple juice with cocaine. And then at the bottom of the screen, it says, does not contain any actual cocaine. It's probably, like, Time for a new name. Yeah, back to the drawing board. Here's my idea for apple juice. Apple juice. Here's the thing. You know what people love these days? They Mm. like beverages that claim health benefits while also being delicious. Okay. But you can't just say that. You can't just be like, it's healthy. It's got to be like, makes your brain more powerful and gives you the energy to have sex good and stuff. Like, mm. it's got to sound extreme. Like, coconut water is a thing. Just make apple water. Just call it apple water. Talk about, like, it'll make you live to 140 or whatever. And you can say whatever you want because by the time people crack down on that, we're on to something else. Just make whatever bogus claims you want. It's like a moving target. Yes. I. This is what Don Draper would do. Just fucking call it like sex juice and tell people when you drink apple juice, your boners are better and you look better and everybody enjoys having sex with you more. And you'll go for like sting time and everybody will be impressed with how good you are at sex because you drank some apple juice. When you're down to pound, get the fruit that's round and now in a bottle. (laughs) It's sex juice. It's made sex entirely juice. from apples and other natural ingredients, like Panax, which apparently makes your wiener bigger. I've Le- heard. Learn the secret that bees have known for <laughs> centuries. <laughs> apples make you better at fucking. Hey, you ever see a horse turn down an apple? No. You ever see a horse's schlong? It's amazing. Ho- apples definitely make you good at sex and make it bigger and better for you and your loved one. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Nay, nay. (laughs) Gotta get these horny berries. And then when people are like, hey, that thing you said about apples and sex isn't true, you say, well, the horse did say nay. It's right in there. That's the asterisk. Could you just put some chunks in there? Oh no, my god! Like orb, love, like orb, orbits. Like you remember orbits? orbits? Are like people love that. What's that? Like bubble tea, but mm-hmm. instead it's just chunks of apple that you have to sift through. I, Adults so, love that sort of stuff. Now. It's sort of like a virgin sangria, is what you're mm-hmm. discussing. Mm. People love filter feeding. Yeah, they love when they're drinking and then they have to do work. Yeah, it. and they can push the apple juice out through their baleen. You know what I mean? And then just keep the chunks, <laughs> and you get a little snack. <laughs> Um, I tell you what would sell it for me. Can I tell you? And this is a fucking, this is foolproof. Okay. On my way to WrestleMania last year, and that's an important part of the story, 
I went to stop to Bucky's. Got a big thing in minute minute time. Minute time apple juice, I think is what it's called. And a big, big bag of sugar-free gummy bears. And blasted through them both. And then they blasted through me <laughs> with some ch- just chart-topping loose stools. Just... <laughs> Just some some real next level stuff, um, and so like my idea is to have them do some sort of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind on me, so that I can ever. Because I think I, here's the thing, I think the sugar free gummy bears are the ones that threw the party inside of me, but the apple juice was certainly a guest of honor, and it's going to be hard for me to sort of divorce it from its role in the festivities. Um, so whatever they can do to sort of just get that out of, out of my mind, um, so I can enjoy the taste again. I'll take my question. I answer off the air. Uh, <laughs> Yo, real talk, for you. those fucking little glass balls also that they had on uh, Boy Meets World and I think on like Martin, the little glass balls that they would just pull out of the fridge. And I know we've talked about those beautiful globules, but like I would drink anything out of those. Are you kidding me? I'd feel like I'm a fucking... Diablo 2 barbarian just chugging a potion getting ready for battle you know what I mean <laughs> with your toilet I I think the thing that apple juice is gonna have to overcome is the fact that it is entirely sugar I mean it's just pure sugar and adults are a little more savvy about that like if you want me to drink something like if you want me to drink a 12 ounce glass of apple juice mm. you're probably gonna have to do better than a fucking half cup of sugar in the bottle of apple juice that I'm consuming. That's lunacy. Yeah, you, no adult's going to buy that. Maybe stop making it. Or you could do like <laughs> Tropicana does with their Tropicana 50 line and literally just fill half the bottle with water. That's what they did. And they're like, it's better for you now. It's like, well, I mean, y- yes. yeah, uh, yeah, in a blend I can enjoy at home. That's um, why I have long advocated for Gatorade to make a line that's just called Gatorade Weak. And it's just watered down because sometimes a Gatorade is just too much. And you pour half of it out and you fill it with the water. And it's like, ah, this is exactly the level of beverage that I desired. It's Gatorade weak. It won't it won't help you in sports. Travis, I love you. I love you. Gatorade G2 is already a thing. And that exists. Yeah. And they done did it. They done did it. They got to go. And, and Bye. Now, Bye. There goes yeah. Travis. Now, I do love the idea of Gatorade for once sort of toning their brand down instead of just escalating and escalating and escalating until it's just like mm-hmm. Randy Moss <laughs> eating his way through a car door to get at the Gatorade <laughs> extreme like that is sitting in the the uh, sitting in the cup holder inside. Like, hey, little guy, you're commercial. looking pretty down. What's that? You've got eight sonnets to finish before class tomorrow? Well, pound one of these. It's Gatorade week. It's not going to keep you up too late, and it's going to fuel your neurons with a mild amount of electrolytes. <laughs> just I, I, This is the commercial I see. Just me sitting on the couch. I grab a Gatorade. I take a sip, and my face just kind of goes like, ooh. And it's like, too much? We I totally hear you. Sorry about that. We put too many electrolytes in there. Here's a <laughs> cup. Dump half of it out. Now try this. We put some water in the Gatorade you already had, but we charged you for it again. Oh, that seems fair. Glug, glug, glug. Oh, that's perfectly miles. I'm ready mm. to take a nap. Please enjoy our sleepy time chamomile Gatorade for poets. <laughs> <laughs> For poets and soft types, brain thinkers. I see you're having a little trouble adjusting your cravat this morning. Well, maybe you need to fuel your brain and cravat tying fingers with Gatorade Week. That bonsai tree's not going to prune itself. (laughs) It's like the cool side of the pillow in a bottle. I work in a hospital and today I went to a subway down the street for lunch. I, they didn't capitalize it, but I'm gonna assume that it yeah. was a restaurant and not and just like, for I'm, I'm one of the night people and it, <laughs> I like to enjoy. I, I had think my you have for, to say, I went to Subway. I think if you say a Subway, that is a different thing. Yeah. That's different. I had my headphones in listening to Mabim Bam while I was eating and while I was walking back to work, I took off my headphones when I walked to the door and apparently a doctor had been following behind me and asked me what I got from Subway. Okay, um, I had no idea who this doctor was, and I just responded that I got a meatball Sammy. He told me his favorite is the chicken teriyaki, and continued to tell me that the previous week there was a special where you could get lobster at Subway. Then he just walked away and didn't say anything else. 
I don't know what the hell just happened to me. Please help. That's from Confusing Cincinnati. Um, mm. you just had a conversation. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just, you made uh, congratulations. I mean, you made small talk. You made we a did deep, it, everybody. A deep, a deep, deep connection. I mean, he was lying. So, like, I guess that that would be a confusing part. I, he was lying, correct? Oh my Since god! It, Subway did have a lobster sandwich. Oh my goodness, golly gosh! So th- that's all that happened to you. I mean, this is more. This feels more to less like a question to me, and Bim Bam three hundred and sixty kind of about a triumph. Like mm. I had a conversation with someone, I made benign small talk for a couple minutes, and then we parted ways. They didn't like what usually happens in our questions, like try to sell me a skeleton or grab my butt or whatever. <laughs> Like, he just had a regular interaction with somebody, and I think that's glorious. But it's not something you need our help with. You did it. You already Congratulations. did it. Congratulations. Yeah. Three, 360, you all finally learned how to fly. Please we teach us it. when you teach get a us second. Now. now you do a podcast, and we'll listen to it. What's your favorite Subway, Sammy, though? I used to fuck with the chicken bacon ranch, but can't. I'm 30, I'm 30. I can't have ranch anymore. I had a weird realization the first time I went to a subway that wasn't in Huntington, West Virginia, Mm. and tried to find my favorite pizza sub on the menu, and not a nationwide experience, I think, the pizza sub. I think You could probably gin one up. They just make it there for you. You would get that. You came in and ordered it one day, and they're like, I guess we'll put some marinara on some shit, and cheese it, and okay, here you go, small boy. We love you very much. (laughs) Very good job. I guess that's not a national thing. I don't know. They're very big in West Virginia, though. I don't know. They're in every West Virginia subway. I don't have a favorite. I just like walk in and say, surprise me. Okay. And they're all good. I've never been disappointed. I used to. This is true. Back when I was a young man who didn't know better, used to get the tuna sub. The Ooh. tuna sub at Subway. Ooh, the, what a mistake that, that make, was. That's the one that they make with the tuna salad in Subway, right? Yeah. <laughs> that that's one? the one that they make begrudgingly. <laughs> Are you it's, sure? Yeah, it, yeah, it's sort of a hesitant scoop that you get on that one. Uh, it, it, like, you'll get a half scoop of it. They're, I'm just trying to limit the risk here. When they go to hand it to you, they'll jerk it back quick and be like, Are we on a prank show? Please don't do this to us. They say you order it, and they say, "Ah, trying not to get somebody to not sit next to you on the bus today, huh?" <laughs> we feel Very you. clever. There are safer ways to do this, sir. Uh, let's get the money up. My brother, my brother, me. That's right. This podcast is supported in part by Casper, an online retailer of premium lint. <laughs> what? Upset premium, obsessively engineered mattresses for a fraction of the price. A pr- the price of what? I don't know. It's not in the copy point, but like think of something else and it's less than that. Think of a big price. N- no, yes. you're, you're wrong. Or, or you might have thought like $60 and that is too low. That's actually, come on. It's, it is a mattress. <sighs> It's like a mattress. Be, be, be fucking serious. And please, don't please, do like 801 because the person next to you said 800. That's cheap. I that. Oh, fuck. Oh, Bullshit. it's the worst. Casper, uh, ha- they the box you get from Casper should not contain a mattress, but it does. And that's the first sin of Casper. <laughs> and it's really, there's several sins. Though they should not be this cheap. That's gluttony, I think, is one of those. It's mm-hmm. our, and, but, and the other sin is, They've defied God and made a box too small to hold a mattress that does hold a mattress. When you open it, it just like expands out and the sin <laughs> is everywhere. It's like uh, what I what I always imagined in cartoons when they like had an emergency raft and it was like a little envelope and then they pull it and it unfolds. That's basically a Casper mattress. Mm-hmm. Um, except it's not funny, it's just comfortable. Well, it does kind of make a funny noise, I guess. Yeah. It kind of makes yeah, this it's like, like a long sh- slow fart. Yeah, quiet. that's a very quiet one though. There's a risk free uh, trial and return policy. You're not going to want to do this, but you can try sleeping on a Casper for 100 days with free delivery to the U.S. and Canada and painless returns. Now, when they say that, that's a lie because you are going to have to stuff it back in that mattress and you're not a wizard. So mm-hmm. you're going to be at that for the rest of your days. Um, th- that's not true. I'm sure there's another way of getting the mattress back to them. Uh, and these mattresses, they're made right here in the good old U.S. of A. Our listeners can get $50 towards any mattress purchase 
if they go to casper.com slash my brother and use the promo code my brother, that's all one word, at checkout. And it says here also terms and conditions apply. I would uh, like to tell you uh, about uh, I beat you to it. I would like to tell you about a service I call Blade Bren. Mm. Because I'm a man on the go. I don't yeah. have time to say blue apron anymore. So yeah, I have like shortened a, it to like blade a, mess, a messy, sticky New Yorker. Exactly. I got to go, go, go. I don't have time to go to the store and figure out how much of what ingredient I want and how to cook it and what ingredients are required for what recipe and what recipes are and where they live. I don't have time for that. But Blapron, formerly Blue Apron, but now rebranded by me, Travis McElroy, not officially by them. Can't say that enough. Blabrin sends you the ingredients you need to make delicious meals with instructions on how to make those meals. So even if you don't know how to cook or what to cook, Blabrin's got you covered. And that's for less than $10 per person per meal. They deliver seasonal re- recipes along with pre-proportioned ingredients. And you get to show off for your, your friends, your family, or even just yourself. Maybe surprise yourself with a delicious meal because, damn it, you're worth it. Yeah. Um, upcoming meals include elote style vegetable tostadas with summer squash, poblano peppers, and cilantro rice, and, pe- and peach honey glazed chicken with mashed sweet potatoes, collard greens, and Thai basil. By the Ooh. way, if you are a, a radio or broadcasting professional and you are looking for the two words that have the most plosives per word in it, you could not do much better than poblano peppers. Oh, yeah. Take that, people at home. It's a, Listen it's a, to my It's piece. a one, two, three, four punch. And you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash my brother. Do not go to blueapron.com. That is nothing yet. But blueapron.com slash my brother. Um, you'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. Uh, it hurts to say so many syllables. Um, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash my brother. Blapron, a better way to cook. Blapron does go to blueapron.com. Now it does. Excellent. Oh, did you so just, you can, did you just but, get it? Yeah, I just got it. If you go to blapron.com, it goes to blueapron.com slash my brother. So you are good there. Just go to blapron. <laughs> You're welcome, blapron. <laughs> You're welcome, blapron. Um, I have a jumbo try message. This one's for Trella, and it's from Logan, who says, Happy anniversary to my favorite person. Thank you so much for all the amazing years we have had so far and for introducing me to these wonderful brothers. Here's to a bunch more years to come. Uh, and that is supposed to go up now. It's June 20th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did a good one. Um, congratulations on your love and for all the amazing years. I like to know how many years. Please include that in these messages because then I add it to the leaderboards. We have an ongoing leaderboards of who has the best love going. Um, I don't know who's, why we. Who's it. currently winning, Griffin? Oh, man. Micah and James' sons. I have another message. This one's for Michael G, and it's from Julia, who says, That's right. I just dropped a cool hunna to get these sweet boys to tell you how much your friendship means to me. Happy approximate birthday, and thanks for nearly three years of friendship and roommatehood. Love you, and great job. And that's for as close to June 24th as possible. We're fucking crushing it now. Yeah. This is really good. Now, three um, years, Griffin, where does that put Michael and Julia? You know, I've got a different one for roommates, and mm-hmm. three years of, you know, not pushing a roommate down the stairs is like really good actually you're really really far ahead of the curb so did i say curb boy oh I yeah but i love you so it's I'm all just right. real just also uh good news the uh traditional third year is cre- leather <laughs> so you could have some fun there oh all right oh. if you get to the, if you get to the second one though cotton so oh. we kind of missed it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they got each other vapes. Huge vape rigs. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. This is Adam Conover. You may know me from my true TV show, Adam Ruins Everything. Well, guess what? Now we're doing a podcast version right here on Maximum Fun. What we do is we take all the interesting, fascinating experts that we talk to for just a couple minutes on the show, and we sit with them for an entire podcast, really going deep and getting into the fascinating details of their work. Find Adam Ruins Everything wherever you get your podcasts or at MaximumFun.org. How about a Yahoo? Yeah, that would go down real smooth right now. This one was sent in by Ryan P. Fami. Thank you, Ryan. It's Yahoo Answers user no name. 
That is their name. I don't know why. Um, should I invent a contraption that only the very smart sperm cells are able to make mm. it through? Will mm. this make future generations smarter? I am a scientist. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I am a scientist. I therefore want to invent some sort of maze that sperm cells have to move through. The problem with this maze is that only the most intelligent sperm cells will be able to make it through this maze. Therefore, since only the most intelligent sperm cells will make it through the maze, the egg will only be fertilized by the most intelligent sperm. And an egg fertilized by an intelligent sperm cell will make a super intelligent baby. Again, just to go back to the first sentence here, I am a scientist. <laughs> This is some, um, I mean, light eugenics. It's a, yeah, some it's a mild soft, eugenics. Soft. Um, here's what. Here, let me hit you with this. Open up Sunday paper. Laugh at Foxtrot. Done. I'm d- I'm glad I'm done with this Sunday paper because it will not be usable after this next part. I find the ju- the maze, or if your local paper does not have a maze, Junior Jumble, or maybe even the Sudoku. Blast one out on it. See who wins. Take that one, and then do a pregnancy with it. So, <laughs> I'm a scientist, I, and I, I'll tell you the the issue is that I came on the Junior Jumble, solved it right there, and the one that I saw sort of scribbling out the answers scooped him up with the you know tool, science tool, and did a pregnancy with it, and uh, Einstein Junior came out. So. My problem with this is that there's a lot of different kinds of intelligence. Yeah. And I didn't, yeah, fluid, liquid. And what you're solving for is a very particular type of, um, uh, a very particular type of intelligence. And I'm not necessarily sure I'm ready for a, a world populated by basically just Will Shorts, just like a sort of huge gaggle of Will Shorts's just sort of running buck wild across okay. Yeah, Where's our like street smart sperm? You know what I mean? Like they can't make it through a maze, but they could tell you how to get like, how to get to the store the quickest way or like, well, let me tell you, this is how it works. This is where you're gonna get like the freshest, you know, vegetables at the market or like uh, you need to make friends with the bus drivers and that's how, like, where's that kind of intelligence? The kind of intelligence that they don't teach at sperm school. You know right. what I mean? Yes. Um, the kind you li- learn living on the streets of Goo York. Oh man, <laughs> we talked a lot about New York, York and New no York. Which one? <laughs> they're Jesus. both gonna stick, right? I mean, they're both sort of. Well, something's gonna feel- stick. <laughs> oh god. Oh, no thanks. I just want a sperm that's gonna be able to like explain Twin Peaks: The Return to me. Just like tell, like, oh, I've never thought of it that way. You're intelligent in a very specific way. So in order to come up with that joke I just said, I was trying to think of like a movie I could say there instead. So I Googled smart movies and just like going down um, (laughs) the Google search history that just popped up in my bar, smart movies, apple juice diarrhea, Dave Thomas problematic, (laughs) Dave Hester's son. These are all very, very good. I am on the FBI watch list for something. Uh, here is another question. Um, whenever I'm part of a group photo, inevitably someone says, okay, now let's do a silly one. Mm. I never know what to do for these and usually just end up making a face that looks like I'm in pain. Any help for what could be my thing? And that's from San Silly in San Francisco. And if you're looking to measure sibilance in your mm-hmm. broadcasting equipment, that's a pretty good one to go for. Um, what I, I like about this, I like uh, just like a contextless silly, like no matter where, this silly will always play. You yeah. know what I mean? I try to just sort of register my disappointment in the request in the photo itself. And then like if everybody else is like making a fart face or a funny, you know, like either yelling or doing a like a you know a fucking jack jack nicholson like eh, you know uh yeah, but classic. you just you see my face in the background and i'm like fuck off with it like it's kind of a funny it's like a silly you know i'll yeah. tell you a good i'll tell you a good go to turn around go- goku well that also works <laughs> but turn around just turn your back on the camera that's so silly because oh, the camera's supposed to be your face yeah that's and you put, you put your glasses on the back of your head and unbutton oh. Unbutton the your butt flaps so your butt's hanging out like a little kid. And turn your shirt around so the ties on on your back, and also turn your pants. Wait, no. Then then it does just look like you're facing forward, and maybe it won't play. Put eyes and a nose on the back of your head. 
Oh, uh, wait. It's gotten away from blow, Get out of the blow up sexual doll. And, <laughs> and have blow that. it up right there. Have it ready. Help wait, make them wait. Don't let him take the photo while you're blowing it up. It's not going to play. You need the fully blown up sexual doll that you have with you. Pull it out of your backpack and do it right there. So good, dude. Are you kidding? If I saw that, fuck. Maybe you take a picture of them taking a picture of you. Oh, oh you have your own camera. Yeah. Push Maybe every. Like- just start pushing everyone around <laughs> you really hard. Don't hurt them, but just push them all over. Push them. Here's one that you don't see a lot. Just give them like a what's up? What's up? Oh, that's great. Because they'll be so excited to see that that's. And somebody looks at that photo and they're like, "When was this taken?" And you'll have to convince them that like, no, it was not during the what's up craze of that particular Super Bowl. It's like ironic. Three afterwards. It's ironic. Why don't you unhinge your jaw and put the head of the person standing in front of you completely in your mouth, like a big snake or something? I love that. That's really funny when you do that. Vogue. Vogue is good. Voguing is good. Maybe put on a really convincing mask. So it's like, suddenly, what's that? Oh, Tom Cruise was there. What's he doing there? But he wasn't. Was so you're you. thinking that you maybe are getting ready to leave for mm-hmm. an event. Mm-hmm. And you'll just sort of put into your back pocket a mask of Tom Cruise that you'll like just sort of carry with you throughout the day for yes. this payoff. Is you that make an excellent suggesting? point, Justin. What you're going to need to do, and I, I will uh, consider this part an homage to Mr. Cruise himself, you are going to already want to have the Tom Cruise mask on and then put a mask of yourself over it. Oh. And then you remove your mask to reveal Tom Cruise mask. Then it's good like Mission Impossible jokes. Exactly. Mm. What about That's Ellen? Pretty good Ellen what about Ellen? Um and Bradley Whitford. Or do you, Brad, Bradley Cooper? Do you remember at the Oscars when they took that picture and like everybody was really v- deeply into it? Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Could you do some? Could you do something like that? That's what that's taking a picture though, Griffin. You're like you're you're already doing something like that by taking the picture. I was just trying to take a good picture, like good funny pictures. It's a ter- <laughs> it's a hard needle to thread. And they did a good can job. You get, can you wear a child's? Uh, two piece bathing suit, and then mm-hmm. right when the picture's about to be taken, you get a dog to kind of funny, cute, come up and like pull the bottom of your britches down. I like and it's that. Sort of like the the what an is that, ex- copper tone? An exposed butt's gonna get you there. Like yeah. no matter there's what. There's really no. There's really no. If your first ingredient is exposed butt, there's really no recipe. But not, that's not mooning. Pay off. Not mooning because that's no. gross and awful. But like Just if a, a dog sliver. comes and shows your butt a little bit, then that here's can be my really worry. Funny. Here's my worry about exposed butt, guys. Oh, no. The first time, it's pretty funny. The Every second, third, picture. fourth, fifth, like, okay. We get, but then do you think it comes back around on, like, the 12th time? Like, he's doing butt again. Yeah. <laughs> what if you just... I don't know, man. Smiled? What if you just have a nice smile? What Warm if you... Eyes. Oh, this is fucking great. This is great. Just do like a fucking like sexy smile. And then everybody else around you is like, uh, jerk off, jerk off. And you're in the background just like, what's up? But not in like the Budweiser way, but like just that you're saying it in a cool way. Then everybody's going to look at this picture and be like, look at all these jag offs. Wait a minute. Who's that in the background? Who is they're, this? They're, they, they look like they just drank a bunch of apple juice and they're ready to go to my, home t- my hometown. And here's here's the here's the power move. Mm. If anyone sees that photo and says to you like, "That's weird," everybody's doing a silly one. Why didn't you do a silly one? You say, "Here's the weird thing: the photographer didn't say yeah. that we were going to do a silly one. Oh, everyone God. else are just that's weird. so good." So they photographer actually said, "Make it do a <laughs> sexy one," and that's why I look yeah. so sexy. Everybody else you see in this picture, and it's everybody that is at this party that I they look really pissed off because I'm saying this really loudly, so they can. <laughs> They're a bunch of fucking clowns when it comes to sexuality. So <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying is that I'm I'm a mature grown up mm. who is in full control of their own sexuality. Yeah, and and that could be yours. That, every time, that's what I have got on on doc. Every time you go to a party that these people host, you bring that picture with you. A new person comes to the party. Hi, what's up? I'm David. Let me show you this picture before you sort of start making any judgments about people here at the house. Um, <laughs> that is me in the back. Yeah. 
We I know. I'm, it's, different. To, it's different than everyone else. I know. We were asked by the photographer to confront and expose our own sexuality. And this is what these, I mean, forgive me, clowns brought to the table yeah. vis-a-vis their, their own human beautiful human sexuality. There's six. Do you like to get out of here? Would you, you like get to get out of, of this den of clowns? Do you want to get out of here? Do you want to hook up with, uh, let's see, there's two different groups of people doing Charlie's Angels, so that's their sex. So maybe we should just uh, go, because it's as good as it gets, like <laughs> Jack Nicholson. Do you guys think when they do a group shot at an event for yeah. clowns, and they're like, do a silly one, I bet it fucking pops off, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I bet it's like so silly. Back when or, clowns were legal, because Barnum and Bailey shut down. And mm. by the way, everybody, just a heads up about that. Barnum and Bailey shut down. So be on the lookout for clowns and jugglers just like roaming the streets like wild animals, specifically yeah. jugglers you have to look out for. But um, I, I, I would be careful about I, that. I was driving to the grocery store with my kids and I looked to my left and there's a motorcycle on a big steel ball. It's not safe. Mm-hmm. That's not safe. Get that off the road. Big steel ball could roll over. My car crush like Indiana Jones. Here's the good. Here's the good news. You're gonna see jugglers, and you're gonna be terrified because they have the projectiles right there in their hands, and it's very, very scary. But the truth is, if they were to use one of those projectiles, they then lose all their power and die like a exactly. bee. Exactly. Don't be afraid so, of them. Yeah, it's they're they're a lot more threatening. Uh, looking than they actually are, but don't get too close because if threatened, they will sacrifice their juggling career to fend you off. So appreciate at a distance um, the danger, the majestic danger of the juggler. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us here on My Brother, My Brother and Me. Uh, We hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Happy uh, Father's Day to all the people filling that role or I think any parent parental role it's a tough gig and uh congratulations to all of you um to anybody who's filled the role taking care of anybody really i would say like if you've helped all our caregivers yeah if you've helped or even just neutral even if you didn't help but you didn't stop someone else from taking care of somebody else congratulations and plants and plants and, and plants uh g- grave keeper is a crypt keeper thank mm-hmm. you for your dedication and your service Mm-hmm. Um, Crypt Keeper also a great uh, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> or a Crypt Daddy. Oh, or is he a, Much a, love a, to the Crypt Keeper. And he's, uh, I bet he's married to a great mummy. So. Ooh. Hey. I see. So um, um, his, his spooky stories, like, you're so scared you'll be crying for your mummy. Hey, um, I'm going to be uh, doing Sawbones Sunday, July 16th. Uh, at the Philadelphia Podcast Festival. Uh, that shows at 2 p.m. that day. It's all ages. Uh, tickets are like 22 to 24 bucks, I think. Um, but if you go to bit.ly forward slash Sawbones Philly, um, it's going to be at the Trocadero Theater, uh, um, and it's going to be really fun, and Sydney and I are going to do a fun show, and I think the Chucks will be there, and we're really looking forward to it. So if you can come out, go to bit.ly forward slash Sawbones Philly, and come say hi to me and watch our show and say hi to, I mean, Sydney as well. Say hi to everybody, really. Uh, and uh, we hope you'll come out. Also, Flophouse is doing a show at that same festival, like, I think directly after us at the same theater. So um, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You should get tickets to their show too and come on out and see us. Uh, and shortly after that, a few days after that, we will then be doing our San Diego Comic Con show. So go ahead and start sending in your questions now, and make sure to put it, you know, in the subject line of SDCC Live. Um, and we'll see you there. Uh, I want to thank John Roderick and Long Winters for the use of our theme song "It's a Departure" off the album "Putting the Days to Bed." Um, it is it's a really good song. It's a really good album. And please go, please go get it. Please just go get it. Thank you. Um, we also want to say, you know, you can follow us on Twitter at MBMBM and all of us individually or whatever. And then you can go to MacRoyShows.com where are listed all our other projects as well as our Twitter accounts, Facebook groups, uh, P.O. Box addresses, that kind of stuff. MacRoyShows.com. Uh, and thanks to Maximum Fun for having us. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows. Um, that's it. That's it. It's Fa Yahoo was sent in by level nine thousand. Yeah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's Yah Drew answers user. Juan Colt says, What gun 
can you picture Ash with from Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, may kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hello, Internet. I'm your husband host, Travis McElroy. And I'm your wife host, Teresa McElroy. And together we present Schmanners. It's extraordinary etiquette. For ordinary occasions. We explain the historical significance of everyday etiquette topics, then answer your questions relating to modern life. So join us weekly on MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are found. No RSVP required. Check out Schmanners. Manners, Schmanners. Get it? <laughs>